Well, if you're watching at home, please sit down. If you're listening to this on a podcast, you might want to pull the car over because what I'm about to tell you is something that's going to be extremely shocking. But progressive Debbie Wasserman Schultz has said something quite ridiculous. Hmm. Take a moment. I know. No. Look around whoa, because whoa, whoa, you'll, whoa, you'll, whoa. Always, you'll always remember where you were when you heard the news. Um, yes, uh, because of the horrible uh, gun violence in America today, she's decided that since banning guns seems to be so difficult, we're going to essentially try to ban ammunition. Uh, we're not going to ban it right out, of course, but we're going to try and do background checks for anybody who buys ammunition. And that doesn't interest me. This is all old news. Let me tell you what does interest me. Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, in defense of the ammunition registration and, and, uh, and pre-ban was, she said, you do not have a right to keep and bear bullets, which I have to admit is constitutional finery that did, in fact, escape me. Because the <laughs> Constitution says that you have the right to keep and bear arms, but it says nothing about the bullets that would go into those arms, Scott. Um, what, what about this tremendous failure on the part of the Founding Fathers to, um, to make it clear that, that, that this, uh, they don't say you had the right to keep and bear flints either, for that matter, I suppose. So there's a lot, there's a lot of, of, of potential loopholes here. Um, what do you say to, to, to this argument that w while you might have the right to keep and bear arms, you don't have the right to keep and bear bullets? Well, like so many other things when it comes to the Founding Fathers and the framers of the Constitution, they just didn't think it all the way through. <laughs> You know, Obviously. from the end of May through early September, day after day, six, eight hours at a time of uh, crafting this draft of the federal constitution, um, they really didn't have time to put a lot of thought into stuff like this. Um, and then after that, it was actually, you know, the, uh, the Second Amendment was actually part of a draft that James Madison did. And Madison for whatever else you might say about him, an affable enough guy, I would say, not a thinker. You know, really kind of... <laughs> he just, Yeah, he just he tended to just blurt out the first thing that, you know, and just scribbled it down. And it, it was like, okay, yeah, here's, here's some rules. Um, but actually, uh, to, to be a little more serious about uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, um, I, I think I can understand her argument there that we should have background checks for bullets. But when you get right down to it, what is it that's really causing the harm here? It's not the gun. It's not the bullet. It's the hole in the body that is the problem. And I think that th we need to direct our attention at banning those. If there's a way that we can somehow restrict the making of holes in the human body through any means, um, I, legislation to do that, I could fully support. Wise. Wise. You know, I thought it never occurred to me. If we only had an outreach program to explain to people that murdering people is bad, if then I suspect this problem would go away. Yeah. Where do you go to She's, start one of those White House petitions? I don't know. Uh, I'll wait till I say something, and then the, the progressives will come knocking on my door, and they'll have a busload of people waiting for me. Uh, Steve, um, your segment, which is uh, kind of in tune with this, was that um, uh, former Supreme Court Justice uh, John Paul Stevens had called for repeal of the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think is a good idea. But as we discussed on that episode, this is, in fact, the legal remedy and everything else, like we don't have a right to keep and bear bullets, is just this kind of extremely low very puerile, infantile kind of sophistry, like the Commerce Clause says that we have a right to regulate commerce. Yes, among states, Indian tribes, and foreign powers, neither of which I am, sadly enough. <laughs> I'd like to be all three now, these days. But, uh, but I'm he neither. He could treat it better, uh, yeah. I'm none. And so uh, you have no business to tell me what to do. But this kind of chicanery, uh, oh, we'll name, we'll name the giant Dole program, we'll call it Welfare, because it says in the Constitution that the Constitution is to provide welfare. See? We don't deserve this Constitution, really, is what I'm trying to say, Steve, right? Not with, not with politicians like this. Well, we do. They don't. Uh, they uh, well deserve said. a swift kick in the keister. Uh, I think it was Jonah Goldberg, probably 10, 12 years ago, who said, it's just ridiculous on the face of it that the founders wrote this document explicitly. It's in all the papers that they, that they kept of the process. 
at the, it was the, the point of the Revolutionary War that we fought to establish a limited government. So it's ridiculous on the face of it that the founders wrote this constitution with this secret keyhole for yeah, unlocking right. these vast powers that Washington was never meant to have. It's, 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 it's just ridiculous. And let me tell you the last time I wanted to pistol whip somebody. <laughs> Dick Durbin. Of all the times. Mm, pistol whip. <laughs> yeah. Dick Durbin was on one of the news shows. This has got to be seven, eight, nine years ago now. And he had a similar idea to Debbie's. And he just had this stuff-eating grin on his face, like, oh, look at how clever I am. Well, you know, there's nothing in there that says we can't put a $100 tax on a bullet. Because if it's really important to protect yourself, you'll you'll be happy to pay $100 for a bullet. But otherwise, you really don't have any right to that. Which, the smirk on his face... Just, I, I just, I wanted a pistol whip that smile right off his face, Bill. It's a, I, I think I might have damaged the monitor, just with the, with, the, just, and they think they're so clever with this. Well, let me, let me, let, let, let's get down to definitions here. You are not bearing a rifle, a weapon, a handgun if it isn't loaded. You are carrying a chunk of steel and wood. You are not bearing a firearm if there are no bullets to be had for it. That's not bearing. That's not what it is. You're just carrying a clump of steel, a useless clump of steel. Bill, Bill, can which I add that? The, which is that, what they uh, want you to be carrying. Stephen Green wanted to pistol whip Dick Durbin because Green could not pass the background check to buy bullets. <laughs> That's right. I got a stash. And if like Durbin, you, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic, really, if Durbin had gotten his way and there was a hundred dollar tax on bullets and Donald Trump's uh, tax rebate would be just enough for a full magazine to be legal here in California. Uh, and um, no, you have tiny so little magazines go. in California. That's right. Puny little things like everything else here. Uh, here's the thing, folks. Um, when you make this kind of argument, it's, an, it, it's not just a tacit admission. It's an open admission that you know you've lost, that you're wrong, that you're, that you're stymied and frustrated, that you're looking for this little prestidigitation. And it's not even a good magic trick. It's like the, it's like the thing where you uncover the egg, you know, that you got when you got your very first magic box thing. It's yes. like, oh, look, an egg. Oh, no egg. See, see, see. It's, it's, it's infantile and childish, which is what we've come to expect from them. The best response to this kind of an argument I've always felt is to simply say, well, then, Debbie, if I can call you that, Deb, your right to free speech means only your right to speak. Mm. And really, it only means the right to speak to people who are within the sound of your voice. Mm. The fact that I've heard you at all, really is a violation of your free speech protections, which we admit are there, but which surely only apply to what you actually say. It doesn't say your right to opinion. It doesn't have your right to free thought. It has your right to free speech. And if I'm not in the sound of hearing your voice, then you don't have a right to free speech. These kind of things. But, but you know, deploying arguments like this against these people is pointless. They, they, folks, you know, when you get into the, when you get this deep into the stupid, you realize it's not stupid. <laughs> It's not like they don't know. It's like they don't care. It's not like California, just as an example, doesn't know that high taxes are causing all of their businesses to leave to go to places where there are lower taxes. It's not like they don't know that. They don't care. They don't care. Debbie Wasserman Schultz is the kind of an example of somebody who I would be absolutely stunningly impressed if she were the assistant manager at a TGI Fridays. <laughs> I would think that woman has exceeded her intellectual I capabilities. Don't know. <laughs> but she is now, or was, the, the, the chairman of the Democratic National Committee. And the, the way you get to be that kind of person is by making comments like this, which are infantile comments for an infantile belief system shared by grown infants who simply don't have the courage, the tenacity, the training, the inclination, the money, the will, or the smarts to be able to do the most fundamental thing that every animal on this earth does, and that is be able to defend its own self against predation. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure there's some things I could add to that that would make it worse, but I won't, so I won't. So there you go. That's your Right Angle this week, brought to you by a small number of very, very dedicated, understanding, kind, and uh, f uh, extremely visionary people who keep these <laughs> messages coming to so many other people. Uh, and for those people, we're eternally grateful. The rest of you could just sod off. <laughs> just, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I Apologies just, um, to I'm, our viewers in the UK. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I didn't mean to say sod off. 
allowed. That's a sawed-off uh, shotgun, is, isn't it? That's that's <laughs> that's what I just used my sawed-off shotgun. <laughs> oh dear God, it's getting out of hand. Anyway, thanks for keeping these uh, shows coming, folks. We appreciate it for our paying members very much, and we will see the rest of you soon. 